Hello, everybody. My name is Anthony Dutra, and I am a technical marketing engineer here at Zerto. And today I am here to discuss with you all disaster recovery in the cloud, to the cloud, anything related to the cloud uh, and Zerto. Let's kick things off with an agenda. I'm going to start off by discussing probably one of my favorite slides um, and really talk about how IT has evolved and really where we've been and where we're going today when we talk about things like digital transformation, cloud adoption, um, really those are the main things that a lot of uh, IT is transforming towards and a lot of um, resources are being put into, you know, how do we leverage the cloud? Do we, how do we migrate to it? How do we take advantage of those new resources uh, that are uh, available and kind of what does all of that look like and how has it changed? Next, we'll discuss kind of the challenges that are brought on not only, um, you know, by this changing complexity as uh, people try to modernize their IT infrastructure to something that is much more cloud-based, um, but the basic things that we have to worry about from a disaster recovery standpoint as IT managers or uh, those responsible for the applications within the data center today. We'll then move on to what Zerto is, right? How it helps address those challenges. And then we'll talk more specifically in regards to how uh, Zerto enables disaster recovery to the cloud, migrations to the cloud, and then what we, uh, the title implies, disaster recovery in the cloud itself and what that looks like with Zerto. Before we wrap up, I'm gonna give you some uh, tools and tips uh, as to how to get hands-on with the solution uh, and start practicing or just seeing for yourself how everything works. All right, so let's start with how IT is evolving. Uh, I, uh, as a previous role of mine, I was what was called a systems engineer and a lot of the customers and people that I spoke with were IT operations uh, managers, IT admins, sysops admins, uh, a lot of different backgrounds, but really what their job and what applications used to center around uh, the majority of back in the day was the data center, right? The physical server, the SAN, the networking, everything that it takes to run an application that the business is using in order to generate revenue, store data for compliance, et cetera, et cetera. The applications back in the day were very much centralized around the data center itself. Uh, so if you ran out of storage in a particular uh, DB application, then you had to call up the uh, data center, get some disk shipped, add them in. And this really allowed for a rigidness and um, uh, a lot of roadblocks when it came to trying to uh, update an application and really uh, take you know, make it much more efficient, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, application developers develop, you know, much more of a waterfall methodology. You had to wait in cycles in order to release particular um, features or sets. And applications were developed in a very monolithic standpoint because, again, it was pretty much tied one for one against the uh, resources that it was running on. In steps, virtualization, right? Uh, hyperscalers, <laughs> VMware, uh, you name it we basically decoupled much of the resources that the application needed uh, from the physical hosts and stuff themselves. And we're now able to slice it up and only provide what is needed uh, to that app. This allows for much more scalability when it comes to uh, being able to not only develop applications in a much more agile cycle, um, but we now expect a much more different approach from IT uh, to be more business focused. So your developer now wants to be able to go to a menu and order uh, the virtual machine that they want in order to run that application. They want to be able to spin down that virtual machine and delete it uh, with just a few simple clicks of a button. So this new virtualized domain um, has further complicated, been the, well, now everybody's pretty much virtualized, except for obviously a lot of maybe physical components that can't be, but the adoption of this sort of mindset and technology uh, has um, has made the shift and pretty much has reached you know uh, the majority of our uh, IC operations today. 
where things are moving and where you really hear a lot of uh, the cloud conversation start to happen is this idea of, well, we now want our applications to be decentralized. The public cloud uh, offers now services where we can break down the database uh, and the front end or now turn everything into these sort of um, containerized formats or microservice based applications uh, really require a lot less resources, uh, but are much more now managed in this sort of decentralized format. And with that, what we're seeing a lot of C-level executives do or a lot of the drive now uh, for the IT teams uh, really on premise today is to almost become a cloud itself. And by doing so, you sort of, uh, you know, adopt this hybrid cloud methodology. So what's going on, we've moved away from the physical uh, servers, sand storage being the absolute driver, that centralized driver for our applications. And now the demand on IT is not only to be more cloud-like, but to adopt these cloud technologies on top of it. And that is necessarily not easy to do uh, from any perspective. And a lot of the challenges that we see and get a lot of good data behind um, are not only from a day-to-day -day operation standpoint, right, in terms of disaster recovery, but adding that extra layer of com cloud complexity on top of it, how do we adopt the cloud, how do we leverage it, and how do we do so in a more most efficient way uh, possible? So a lot of these challenges, uh, I'm sure you are facing in your day-to-day -day operation today, um, but I'll just kind of go through them quickly. Uh, the rise of ransomware, right? I, I think it's, I just heard last week of another major ransomware attack, I think at a large casino uh, brand. Um, it's costing businesses, as you can see there, 265 billion, a projection by 2031, and it's only gonna get worse uh, pretty much from here on out. As again, we sort of move toward these more cloud models, decentralized formats of uh, these application architectures and being able to protect them from ransomware in an efficient format. Ransomware is not the only thing that will cause disruptions. So do hurricanes, so do down servers. Uh, so does uh, you know a cloud uh, data center catching on fire. There's a lot of disruptions and potential data loss uh, that is happening really, no matter if you're on the cloud today or just looking to adopt it. Um, and it costs again, money per hour in order for this to take shape. Um, or really, well, if it does take shape, right? If you lose a data center, if you, or even if a VM goes down, that's a critical component of that app, it is a dollar value that is a cost to your business um, and reflects poorly on IT itself. Um, and again, now this infrastructure complexity and this rise in adoption to cloud, it is not easy to take an application on-premise today and simply lift and shift it into AWS or uh, Microsoft Azure. There's a lot of different services and a uh, learning curve itself that requires uh, from the IT teams to learn that new uh, technology and really take advantage from an uh, efficiency standpoint of cloud services um, in a much more uh, simple, you know, you have to learn the cloud stuff in order to leverage it. You can't just take your application and simply move it into the cloud without some uh, technology in between that can really help that be possible. So complexities are abound and challenges are abound if you are uh, responsible for IT today, everything from ransomware to disruptions and now this uh, mass adoption of uh, cloud technologies. So let's start with what is Zerto? Zerto, at a very high level, 10,000 foot overview, is continuous data protection for any app and any cloud against any threat. I mentioned ransomware before, disasters, and the ability to uh, move freely between uh, multiple clouds. Zerto leveraging its continuous data protection uh, software that we've been known for uh, for 10 plus years can help an organization not only stay protected, uh, but also adopt cloud technologies in a DR fashion, as well as help with mobility or migrations to these different providers. 
what our continuous data protection is wrapped in is a layer of orchestration and automation, which, as I've mentioned before, uh, there are a lot of manual components to maybe lifting and shifting or refactoring applications to the cloud um, that Zerto actually helps and uh, automates for you. Um, and that could be used in both a DR as well as mobility standpoint. And then, of course, uh, paired with that is the Zerto analytics itself. So across these multiple cloud platforms, whether it's private on premise, uh, you have Zerto deployed in some public cloud instances, you're able to see the full breadth and depth uh, of your DR strategy, the RPOs on average, RTOs, what are the uh, you know, SLAs that are being met uh, all through that sort of one platform and tool. So it's uh, a continuous data protection solution that is all done uh, through block level replication. And it's also done with what we call near synchronous replication. So Zerto is a software only solution. We're not pinned to any particular hardware or storage. You can have uh, any of that of your choice. And we're not running agents or forcing you to schedule these uh, different sort of windows in order to uh, replicate your uh, applications. We allow you to do so uh, quite freely. Uh, and in a very specific way that allows you to replicate not only to maybe one specific site, but to multiple sites uh, at a time. So it is very different in regards to a lot of other data protection solutions out there today. And what really makes the CDP portion of Zerto so unique and powerful is our journal. So the journal is sort of what I like to call the DVR-like function of Zerto itself. When you tell Zerto, hey, I want to protect these particular virtual machines or virtual instances, not only does, which I'll get into the next slide, Zerto group them together, but when you do eventually fail over or move that application uh, to a secondary site, you're able to choose, uh, again, almost like rewinding the DVR, five, 10 seconds to a point that's clean, and you don't have to necessarily suffer from hours of data loss that might be associated with other technologies uh, used for data protection as well. So what Zerto allows you to do with our journal is recover in minutes uh, to seconds um, before an attack actually happens, minimize that downtime and data loss, uh, and really, if you are, in this case, uh, forced to pay a ransom, you can actually just neutralize that threat completely because you rolled back before that encryption uh, actually happened. So extremely powerful tool. And as I alluded to previously, we're able to protect these virtual instances in this sort of application-centric approach. So we know that uh, applications are made up of uh, multiple virtual instances themselves. You're gonna have, like, let's say a front end, uh, a database instance, they're all going to be separated, but they need to be protected together in order to make up that one cohesive app that is, again, servicing your business itself. So when Zerto does, uh, again, failovers or migrations, you're able to logically group these virtual machines together so they come up to the exact same point in time uh, that is, again, most useful and sufficient to the business itself. So very um, consistent in regards to, uh, again, becoming operationally efficient. And all of this, all of this is automated and orchestrated uh, straight through the dashboard itself. So again, a simple failover operation will just take seconds to actually execute. You can see here, let's say we want to fail over our Exchange server. We simply click the failover button, choose which VPG we want to fail over, uh, say, hey, Zerto, we want this point in time. You can see the five, 10 second checkpoints that you can roll back to. Uh, I want to roll back to here, click next, and then click start failover test, right? So it's that easy, it's that simple, it's all GUI based, and you don't have to worry about a lot of the manual processes that are happening on the back end. And we do provide a lot, a lot of deep features when it comes to uh, bringing your applications back online and in a state that is most valuable. So you can see things, I, a lot of things that uh, excite people are the re-IPing, 
uh, boot ordering of the virtual machines in case you do need to actually stagger uh, some of them to come online at different times. Uh, there is, again, the monitoring reporting that is completely huge where you can see across your full Zerto implementation, all of the analytics and goodies um, behind the scenes. But really what makes Zerto a market leader in disaster recovery is the simplicity and um, really unintrusiveness of the software itself that makes it so valuable to uh, everything that you see here. And really what Zerto does is allow for this foolproof recovery. Um, I, you know, you saw a quote in the last slide about you know how quick and easy it was to leverage Zerto itself. Zerto has tested our uh, replication failover, failback technology time and time again, and we see minutes of recovery point times um, happening, right? So if you are attacked, you don't have to wait days to recover. You can come back off online operationally very, very quickly leveraging Zerto itself. So awesome, right? Zerto is this great technology that allows you to near synchronously replicate your applications um, really anywhere you want. So what does that disaster recovery to the cloud actually look like? Well, unlocking the cloud with Zerto is quite easy. We basically take that CDP that we are known for and we allow for the movement of your virtual machines uh, to the cloud itself. Uh, in case, you know, in case of an actual disaster, so you can do disaster recovery to the cloud. Um, if something happens on premise, you spin it up in a public cloud provider or MSP, you're able to uh, run the application there. And then once everything is fine, you can bring it back down on premise and start again. Uh, a lot of the technology behind it, when you do fail over to the cloud, it is native cloud uh, resources and um, services that you are using. You're not using any third party tools or anything crazy in order to perform uh, that DR failover and failback um, process. Same thing for migrations. As you can imagine, we're just not coming back with the migration. Uh, the move capability with Zerto allows you to, again, natively move to a public cloud provider uh, that we offer, as well as to, let's just say, another site if you so choose, um, like, an, like an MSP and disaster recovery within the cloud itself. So Zerto does have solutions where uh, for particular public cloud providers, we're able to replicate across regions uh, and ensure alongside a lot of the high availability features or services built into the cloud, that DR is another layer of protection that you can add quite seamlessly uh, in this new sort of cloud adoption uh, world. So let's talk about our cloud native architecture itself. Uh, so if this is somebody looking to replicate from on-premise to AWS or Microsoft Azure, Zerto has you deploy what is called the Zerto Cloud Appliance. You have your uh, you know, Zerto uh, implementation on-premise. You say, hey, Zerto, here's all the VMs I want to protect. Now you're going to talk to the ZCA living in AWS or Azure, right? Whichever one you decide to provision it in. And when you do a failover operation, we're going to come online into AWS or Azure using their native services. So again, Zerto is built with um, these cloud technologies in, in the actual accounts themselves. So the ZCA is an actual EC2 instance. It's using uh, S3 bucket in order to store some snapshots, uh, using EBS disk, right? This is all native to the public cloud that you're failing over to and is very easy to manage and use. So this is what that continuous DR architecture looks like for AWS, as I mentioned, right? You have on-premise your basic Zerto setup with our virtual replication appliances or VRA. Uh, doing much of the replication itself, and you are natively moving into AWS uh, with AWS services that I mentioned before, right? EC2, uh, S3 bucket, and your applications are coming online in AWS as AWS resources. The next piece that uh, we talk about is Azure, right? So the other public cloud provider that we are uh, Zerto allows failover natively into. Again, same sort of story uh, 
with the AWS One, we are leveraging the uh, tried and true technology that Zerto is uh, on premise and allowing to replicate from uh, you know natively uh, you know on premise to the Microsoft Azure using its native tools. Um, you know. Azure VMs, multi-disks, uh, blob storage in order to store the snapshots, et cetera. Now, that is DR to the cloud, right? We're able to move uh, applications in the event of a disaster from on-premise private cloud implementation, maybe VCD, to uh, AWS or Azure natively. Well, how about we take that same technology and can we migrate to those clouds as well? And the answer is yes, right? So there is, as I mentioned in the beginning, a huge drive to migrate to the cloud as well, which is causing a whole bunch of infrastructure complexities when it comes to refreshing the hardware. Uh, if your company is being uh, purchased and now merging with another organization and they have a cloud strategy, but you don't, how do you sort of uh, leverage a tool that can help you uh, be more proactive in adopting that new cloud technology or uh, even from a DR perspective, just using it as a target in order to keep your business online. So there's a lot of uh, different drivers that are uh, causing a need for not only DR to the cloud, but a migration to the cloud as well. Because again, it's not easy to move things from one area to another without the high risk potential, high overhead potential, and just difficulty of moving things around um, with the amount of manual steps required. Zerto does allow us to actually do that. Zerto can, with its continuous data protection technology, protect, recover, and move data and applications between these different cloud providers. I've already talked about uh, Microsoft Azure and AWS. Those, again, you can replicate natively to, uh, and you will be using their services. But if you are looking to jump into the realm of GCP, IBM Cloud, or Oracle, we do allow for Zerto to run on their, uh, like let's say VMware as a service platforms. And we also have a huge, huge, huge 350 plus list of MSP providers who provide a great DRAS solutions uh, or a cloud for you to bail over to or migrate to uh, in the event that something happens. So again, that uh, continuous data protection that Zerto provides uh, can be done so in a hybrid and multi-cloud format. Behind the scenes, the migration process is quite simple. Um, and if you know you listened before to how uh, the CDP uh, worked and you know how we went through that orchestrated flow, this is kind of just another way of saying it, but for our move operation. You can see that the second you create a VPG, right, we're syncing between the primary site and whatever site you have Zerto replicating to. Uh, the CDP portion begins. You decide when you want to migrate that application to that other site. You can actually perform a move operation in a test format. So remember before when we chose from the list of checkpoints to roll back to, you can say, uh, you know, I want to test that first before we uh, select that move. I'm going to select this point in time and let's see uh, Zerto move the application uh, to that secondary site. Uh, with minimal data loss uh, and being done so in an efficient manner. So the process is very simple to uh, use and it just takes minutes um, without you having to shut anything down or move anything yourself. Again, testing uh, is a huge, huge, huge feature in Zerto itself. Uh, and really, no matter if you're doing a failover or you're doing a migration uh, to a public cloud, to any of the clouds that I uh, listed off earlier, you're going to get a nice report that shows step-by-step timestamp what exactly Zerto automated and orchestrated on the back end in order to take that stress off of uh, yourself, right? So it's very easy to uh, test a migration, uh, validate what worked, what didn't, and be able to seamlessly roll back or um, you know, commit a move 
uh, if everything does uh, check out. A great use case uh, for our migrations uh, in Spirit Airlines. Uh, it has been quite uh, the stormy weather out here where I have been, uh, and hurricanes have been coming up a lot recently for some reason. Uh, and this was a really cool use case that I pulled up uh, where Spirit actually migrated all their critical applications in less than three hours to another site um, without any downtime. So again, the power of uh, Zerto being able to give you that proactivity when it comes to moving an application for a DR standpoint such as this uh, is just extremely beneficial. So why Zerto for migrations, right? If you are looking to move to the cloud uh, and don't want to worry about uh, a tool that requires specific hardware uh, to run, uh, is fast and flexible and will give you the confidence to migrate an application because you literally get step-by-step -step guides uh, as to what it did for you, then Zerto is the tool to look to if you're looking to adopt uh, you know, any of those clouds that I showed before and want to get um, going right away. We have covered a lot so far, but now we are going to get into the crux of how Zerto can help disaster recovery in the cloud itself. So why Zerto for native cloud workloads? Pretty much what you're going to get is what we've been talking about this whole time, that same orchestrated disaster recovery workflow, uh, but across region in the public cloud um, of your choice. So it's very simple to deploy the Zerto solution as it is, uh, let's say, in your private cloud implementation or on-premise. There's no agents and it's built to scale, so you can protect thousands of virtual instances across uh, multiple different regions, and it's very operationally efficient. We uh, have uh, open documentation with our Swagger APIs. Uh, a lot of our solutions have a CLI-based um, tooling that you could use in order to interact with it. It's, from a cloud perspective, built for the cloud, and it is designed to protect the cloud in regards uh, to disaster recovery. So the first multi-region DR capability is uh, Zerto for Azure. Uh, this allows for, as you can see, the setup looks very similar to what it would on-premise to um, Azure, but now it's just the ZCA itself, as well as those VRAs uh, just replicating between regions. We've actually worked with Microsoft to create our own uh, API that does a lot of these, uh, the snapshotting and automation behind the scenes. And we recently came out with a new multi-disk consistency that allows for um, whatever instances you are protecting to ensure that the, no matter how many disks are attached to it, you're able to replicate seamlessly between uh, many different Azure regions. We've also sort of segmented out the VRA itself, uh, which means that we're able to uh, scale the replication portion of the, uh, at the, the Zerto solution for Azure uh, in a much more efficient manner. Uh, again, allowing for a lot faster RPOs and RTOs while leveraging native Azure tools. And then we have the same thing for Zerto in cloud, but for AWS. You're with them able to replicate across regions and availability zones. It is extremely simple and flexible to use. Again, we're not leveraging agents. We're not um, a, you know, a forcing you to download uh, a third party tool in order to leverage the software. It is uh, simple and scalable uh, straight out the box. Now, what does it mean when I, again, say that we're natively replicating between these different regions within AWS using AWS resources? Well, I'm going to show it exactly on screen here. When you set up Zerto in cloud for AWS, the system automatically starts creating EBS snapshots of the instances you have told it to protect. We're going to replicate those snapshots to that target region, again, using uh, just EBS snapshots, uh, S3 buckets and then DynamoDB to do a lot of that checkpointing of those different points in time for you to roll back your instances to 
in the event of a failover. So a failover does happen, right? US West 2 catches fire. Uh, you can simply start the um, operation, failover operation uh, at uh, in a different region. Uh, see the registered instances and in, uh, this come back online to that exact point in time that you've chosen again from that journal and then validate and commit that change all without having to worry about uh, what is going on in the other region and you're completely hands off in a lot of the uh, recovery process that is automated and orchestrated by Zerka. So with uh, Zerka and Cloud for AWS, just to harp on it further, we give you this uh, CDP protection across multiple different regions. Right now, we cover all major regions, more are being added uh, in time, and you're able to really protect a lot of your EC2 instances, thousands of your EC2 instances across multiple regions at the same time. So let's wrap everything up here. I really hope that during this presentation, I was able to show you the many differences in regards to what makes Zerto unique uh, when it comes to talking about not only disaster recovery cloud, to the cloud, but also just multi-cloud mobility in general. From my perspective and really from a lot of the quotes that you saw from customers or uh, the example that I've shown, Zerto is that one platform that can protect and migrate any uh, virtual instant workload from, to, and in between uh, on-premise and the uh, public cloud providers, right? Any of those offerings that you've seen out there. Zerto for over <laughs> a decade has been known for its continuous availability and the sort of uh, unique aspect of its continuous data protection platform really allows for those fast recovery times uh, and that crucial, uh, you know, no data loss or downtime required for a 24 seven business, um, you know, to, to be operational, right? You don't want to have any data loss or downtime associated with, um, with, with your solution and with, excuse me, with your applications. And particularly as cloud technologies, you know, become much more prevalent or as our data centers become uh, actual clouds themselves, you're going to need something that is uh, both um, very secure in what it can offer from a data recoverability standpoint, but also is very, very hands-off when it comes to you know, failing over and failing back, right? Zerto has great built-in orchestration and automation for all of that, not only you know, to DR into the cloud or in between the cloud, but migrate to the cloud as well. And then of course, that analytics, that single pane of glass to see your full DR in the cloud, to the cloud, in between the cloud um, with Zerto Analytics is just another way to show the scale of the solution um, and how easily it can be managed. All right, I am going to wrap up this presentation, but if you do have questions, I will be happily able to take them. What I would highly, highly suggest everybody does from here though, is go to zerto.com slash labs if you want to see any of the stuff that I talked about, experience it for yourself hands-on and actually try failovers, try moves uh, from on-premise to AWS, uh, Zerto in cloud for AWS, uh, Zerto from on-prem to Azure. We have hands-on labs for all of it that are free for you guys to use uh, and play, spin up and uh, destroy as you see fit. So please definitely take advantage of those check out what's new in uh, Zerto 10 uh, by scanning there. And what I think is very, very important is look at our customer reviews and hear from uh, your peers as to what Zerto uh, can do. Thank you all very, very much for... Uh, yeah, for your time, everybody. Oh, did my screen go out there? Can everybody hear me still? I think so. All right, that was the end of the broadcast, everyone. Uh, I guess if there are any questions, I'm not too sure how we handle them here, but I will be more than happy to uh, take them for a couple of minutes.
Awesome. Thank you, Joe. Thank you all for coming. I can see people dropping. I do see where they can put questions. Will the slides be available? I believe so. Oh, hold on. Now I'm starting to see them all. Additional information on automation, integration control. Just, um, so, no, there isn't. Um, aside from our APIs, right? Um, that's really the only way that you can um, interact with Zerto, I guess, from uh, that perspective. So, yes, right? Aside, uh, there's no built in tool inherently with Zerto that will have you interact, interact with a Morpheus. Um, or a HashiCorp, et cetera. We do have joint solution briefs, particularly with Morpheus, as to how we do work with companies like them. So there are integration documents out there. A lot of it's going to be API-based and set up from a third-party perspective or from yourself. Um, let's see if there's any more questions. Uh, can ZCA run on a Linux machine? Yes, it can. Uh, there is for both uh, implementations. Uh, if you go to the AWS Marketplace, uh, you can find, actually that's for, you can only find the ZCA in the AWS Marketplace. Uh, you cannot find the ZCA in the AWS Marketplace. You can download it and it is, I believe at this time, still Windows. If you do reach out to your uh, account manager, however, there is a Linux version, I believe in still beta. Uh, for Azure, however, if you do subscribe through the marketplace for the ZCA, it is a Linux version of the instance, although we still recommend uh, running Zerto 10 uh, in there on uh, Windows server for now. Um, but yes. And as everybody would know on premise is, all right, so can you fill over CDP from one cloud? In <laughs> no. No, you cannot uh, from AWS to Azure. That is difficult. But uh, again, if you have a private cloud on premise today, uh, where you, you, know, you basically use, you know, uh, excuse me, BCF to replicate to Oracle Cloud uh, on VMware or any of those sort of flavors, you can kind of stretch a two cloud uh, in between cloud story there, but not between public cloud providers. That wouldn't be. I don't know if it's on the roadmap or just something not at this time that could happen. Where does Zerto console reside in the cloud in case of a fail board fail back? Um, how does that all work? Uh, great question. So Zerto actually resides on both sites that you are replicating to and from. Uh, so if you're replicating from a production site to, let's say, AWS, the, you have Zerto on both sides of it. Right, you're only paying for the license to replicate whatever you need between those sites, but your journal itself, everything doing the tracking of the changes, uh, everything of that nature is at the secondary site. So if production goes down, you can access it from that second site um, and come back online, right? There's multiple uh, avenues to get into your Zerto instance to perform a failover and fail back. And then we're licensed per uh, on a subscription basis, you know, three three years, five years, whatever. Uh, and then there's per VM as well, uh, one VM ten or uh, hundred plus. Uh, do, do, do. Is the source VMware or can it be KVM? Yeah, no, unfortunately, uh, at this time it is uh, VMware for Zerto ten only. I hope one day KVM for sure. I feel. What is the pricing model? Again, subscription based, um, full replication functionality, one to many. All of that is on a license basis uh, of, of a subscription yearly, or you can pay per VM that you're looking to protect between sites. No questions. Will slides available? Thanks. Awesome. All right. I think I have answered all the questions in the chat. Again, thank you all so, so much for joining me today, uh, and we will look forward to you coming to the next one. Thanks again.